Hello crochet friend! Today I have a very special tutorial for you guys. We are going to be making a daffodil flower because spring is just around the corner. Also Mother's Day, so this one makes the perfect gift for any occasion. But this one is a little bit more special than you think. It's not just a flower. So I made the center a little bit bigger so that we can place round chocolates inside it. Look at that, isn't it the cutest thing? So you can make a bouquet of these with many different chocolates, round chocolates inside it, or you can add to a real bouquet, maybe three or four with the chocolates like this. And then another idea, you can make just a flower like this without the stem and the leaf. And then you can just add a loop at the back here, and then you can use this as a napkin holder. You can add to the center of your fabric napkins and then you can add a chocolate inside it, just as a little decor for your guests. Look at that, isn't it so cool? So yeah, another idea for you guys, and it's going to be perfect for Easter dinner or Easter lunch if you are decorating the table. So yeah, you can do this as well. So first let's make the flower. So because I wanna have a little bit more structure to my flower because we are adding a little bit of weight to it in the center because of the chocolate, I'm going to be using a polyester cord. This is a three millimeters. And this is the Thai Sublime by Teslan.com, my absolute favorite corded yarn. And if you wanna check any of the things that I'm using, I'll leave everything linked in the description below. So feel free to check it out. And I have here white and yellow. You can do the flower all yellow, all the parts in yellow or you can do it colorful like I'm doing, white and yellow. And for this very first part, I'm going to be using a five millimeters crochet hook. I don't know about you, but I always have my favorite drink with me when I'm crocheting. So yeah, get your drink ready and now let's begin crocheting the flower. So leave enough yarn for the weave-in, make a slip knot and chain four. Now you're going to join into the very first chain with a slip stitch to make a ring. And we are going to be working into the center of this ring. So chain one, and then into the center of the ring, just open it up a little bit, find the center. Now into the center, work eight single crochets. So once you have the eight single crochets around, the chain one is not gonna count as a stitch. Now you can slip stitch into that first single crochet. So here's round one. You can tighten the center now if you want. So now chain one, go into the next stitch and work two single crochets. And now follow the same steps all the way around, working two single crochets into every stitch around. So I'm here into my last stitch now. So work two single crochets into the last one. You're going to be skipping the chain of one and slip stitching into the first single crochet. So here's round two. So now we are going to chain one and for the next round only for round three, we are going to be working back loop only all the way around. So go into the following stitch, back loop only, single crochet, just one single crochet, Next stitch, back loop only, work one single crochet, following one, back loop only, one single crochet. And now you're going to be doing this all the way around. So I got into my last one now. So back loop only and work one single crochet, skip the chain one and slip stitch into the first single crochet. So these little in relief loops here that we have left in round two, we are going to be using them to make the petals of the second collar. So the little white petals. So now to continue, you're going to chain one and now we are going to be working into the entire stitch until you have the sizing of the center that you want. So chain one, go into the next stitch and single crochet and now you're going to work one single crochet into every stitch around, just following the stitches of the previous round. And now you will see that your work is going to turn into a little cup because we are just working into every stitch around. So here's my last one. So I'm gonna work my last single crochet, skip the chain one, 
and slip stitch into the first single crochet. So you can see that it's turning into a little cup. So before I continue, I'm going to turn my work inside out and I'm going to weave in the center end. So I'm going to pull the yarn really nice and tight to make sure that the center is really nice and tight. And if you are excited and happy that spring is just around the corner, comment below a bunch of little flower emojis so that we can share our love for springtime. Yeah, I'm also going to be commenting with you guys. Let's go. <laughs> now I'm going to turn my work inside out again. So I have the right side on the outside now. So now I'm going to be doing one more round following the same steps as round four. So just one single crochet into every stitch around. So this is how it looks like now with round number five completed. You can make this a little bit taller if you want to, but I wanted to keep this size. I think this one looks pretty nice with the chocolate inside. So now we are going to be making the little picots around the top here. So it's nice and frilled like this. We are going to chain two. And now we are going to slip stitch into the same stitch. So I'm going to go into the same one that I did the slip stitch and slip stitch. So now I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Chain two and slip stitch into the same stitch that you did the previous slip stitch. So this is what you're going to be repeating all the way around. So slip stitch into the following stitch, chain two and then slip stitch into the same stitch. So this is how I'm going to be making the edge here. You can make any other way you like. You can even make a chain of three if you want them a little bit bigger. But yeah, this is how I made the little scalloped edge. So now I'm going to repeat the same steps all the way around. So I'm making now the last pico. Now we are going to chain one, cut off the yarn, leaving a tail for the weave-in. Now we can fasten off and we can weave in this yarn inside this little cup that we did. So this is how it's going to look like. And now we are going to be using the in relief loops that we have left here into round two to make the petals. So now I'm going to make using white, but you can also make it in yellow as well. So now with the next color you want to use, you're going to make a slip knot. And when attaching the next color, you want to make sure that you hold the little cup that we did like this and not this way, because otherwise the petals will be on the reverse. So hold it like this. So I'm just going to fold it so I can see the little loops. You can choose any of the loops, insert your hook, and then you're going to slip stitch to attach it in place. So now you're going to be skipping the next stitch and then into the following one. Work one half double crochet. And then two double crochets. and then a treble crochet, all into the same stitch. And now we are going to be making a pico here at the top, so chain two, and then you're going to slip stitch into the front two loops of the treble crochet, just getting them like this, and then now you can slip stitch. And now into the same stitch, we are gonna make the other side of the petal. So work one treble crochet, two double crochets and then one half double crochet and then you are going to slip stitch into the following stitch so here's the first petal and now we are going to repeat all this all the way around so you're going to be skipping one stitch and then into the following one, you're going to be making the petal. So into that stitch, work one half double crochet, two double crochets, and then one treble crochet. Now make the pico, so chain two, and slip stitch into the front two loops of the treble crochet, now into the same stitch, work one treble crochet, 
two double crochets. And one half double crochet. And then slip stitch into the next stitch. So here's the second petal and now repeat this all the way around. So I got here at the end now and I have three stitches left and I'm going to make the last petal. So I'm going to be doing five in total. So I'm going to be skipping the next one, make the last petal into the next stitch. And then lastly, I'm going to slip stitch into the last stitch. Now I'm going to chain one, cut off the yarn, leaving a tail for the weave in and fasten off. So if you want, you can make a knot using the two ends that you have here so that also the two slip stitches, they come together. So that's what I'm gonna do. And now I'm going to weave in the two ends at the back of the petals here. Once you've finished making it, it's going to look like this. Now we just have to organize it in place. So just pull all the petals and then the center, you can just mold it around. And now you can go ahead and make as many flowers as you want. Now the next thing that we have to do is to make the leaf and this is the one that I've decided to make. You can also make a longer one but I decided to make this size one and I've recycled this pattern from the tulip flower so it's the same leaf pattern so I'll leave the tutorial linked in the description for you guys so you can click and watch the tutorial if you don't know how to make this leaf here it's super simple and I'm also going to leave a very quick little written pattern here for you guys for the leaf so you can pause it and read and make the leaf now you can make one or you can make two so it's going to be completely up to you. I'm going to make some with one leaf and some others with two leaves. So for the daffodil, I've decided to use a darker green than the tulip tutorial making this leaf. So I have here the Edif in this beautiful green shade. This one is a 25% wool and 75% acrylic. And then to crochet the leaves, I have used a four millimeters crochet hook and I'm going to be weaving all of the ends at the back of the leaf. I did the one here at the top, so I'm going to weave in the one here at the bottom now. So here's one leaf completed and for this flower here, I actually made with one leaf and I wanna try the next one a little bit different. So I wanna make the next one with two leaves. So I have two leaves now completed. So now the last thing that we have to do is to put the flower together. So I have here the flower, the two leaves, and then I'm going to be using this floral wire. I'm going to be leaving it in the description below, the link for this one that I got from Amazon. And it's a two millimeters one, very sturdy actually. I really like it, how it looks with the flowers like this. And then I'm also going to be using a wire cutter, a round nose plier. I'm going to be gluing everything with hot glue. And then lastly, you will need the same yarn as you did the leaf so that we can wrap the wire with that same yarn. So now let's put it together. So my hot glue is now ready. So now you wanna take the wire and the yarn. You wanna hold the end of the yarn here at the top of the wire. And now you wanna place a little bit of hot glue to the top here. And now with the working yarn, you wanna wrap it around the glue and the wire going upwards. So it's nice and dry. And now you can cut off the smaller end, just like so. So now you just wanna apply a little bit of glue on top of the previous wrapping and a little bit on the wire and just wrap it going down. So this that we're doing here at the top is just gonna make it a little bit thicker, but if you want, you can just cover it with yarn all the way through and you don't have to do this little thick part at the top. And now I'm simply going to wrap the yarn around the wire until I want to add the leaf. So once you reach to the point where you want to add the first leaf, go ahead and get the leaf, put it with the wire while you don't have any wrapping. And now you're just going to hold both together and just wrap everything with yarn. 
And if you want to add two leaves, simply just wrap a little bit the first leaf and now just add the other one. And now just wrap everything with yarn. So once you have wrapped all the wires with yarn, now you can just choose the sizing that you want for the length of your stem. I'm just going to cut it a little bit shorter and now I'm going to continue wrapping and covering all the wire with yarn. And then at the end, before you finish the wrapping all the way down, apply a little bit of glue and finish the wrapping all the way down. And now simply cut off the yarn at the end. So now you have to glue the flower with the stem. So I'm going to be doing where I did the little thick part at the top. So I'm going to be applying a little bit of hot glue to the stem. And then I'm going to be gluing it at the back of the flower right into the center, just like so. All right, it's nice and dry now. Look at it with the two leaves. It's just so adorable. I love it. You can just mold the leaves around and it looks so cute. Look at this. So once the flower is dry, you can now decide if you want to have the flower facing up or to the front like this other one here. So how I did it, I just used my round nose plier. I grab the bottom of the flower where the wire is and then I just twist it to the front like this. So it's completely up to you how you want to have your flower. So you can have some also facing forward and some facing up. I just really love them facing forward like this. So now the last step is to add the chocolate inside the center of the flower. So I just like to remove the bottom because it doesn't really look good with the bottom. So I just remove it. And now I place it inside the flower like this. Just push it in. It's going to fit perfectly. There we go. Look at this. Peel off the layer of green. Lift up your head and lead. Count the stars on before you leave. Save a kiss, pretty please. Try to reminisce over me. Know that I will cherish. Ta-da! Look at these flowers. I love them. <laughs> I'm so happy. I cannot stop smiling when I look at them. Ow! Um, I want to eat it. <laughs> so this is how you crochet these stunning flowers. They are super easy, super quick to crochet, and they make the perfect gift for any occasion. Let me know in the comments who you're going to be gifting one of these for. And also, if you make one, don't forget to tag me so I can see your take on it. And if you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe here to the channel so you can watch more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!